Well, hello, and how are you doing this evening? My monitors seem to be off a little bit. There we go. Sound was unbalanced, and that can really throw you a little bit, you know? Anyway. Oh, my goodness. So, um, I'm tired. I'm tired. It was a long day. My allergies are kicking my butt right now. You might be able to hear it a little bit in my voice. I'm uh, slightly congested. Not overly so, but slightly congested. And as a result, it uh, affects um, my hearing and my, my speech. So it's a band right across here. Sinuses, upper sinuses, not lower. It's the uppers that's uh, congested. And that is not pleasant, but uh, hey. What are you going to do? Take some medication and chill out. I just uh, decided I'd wait until after the show to take it because it makes me uh, very drowsy, which might help me get a good night's sleep tonight because last night I was I tossed and turned throughout the night. And I don't know why. I just did. Sometimes that's just how things go. Sorry, I just have to fix something here before it falls off my desk. My Lola cam. It's the cam I use to um, to uh, spotlight Lola when she decides to come and join me. And this evening she has decided not to, for whatever reason. She is lying on the couch watching hockey, actually. Yes, she does. She'll. Uh, I don't think she pays attention to it, but she will look up from time to time to watch the hockey game. I think it's the moving figures that she finds fascinating. Lola, of course, being my 80-pound uh, shelter rescue dog, um, American uh, part American bulldog, and mostly Dogo Argentino, which was a breed I'd not heard of before. But anyway, I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about my dog all night long because, well, it's not what everybody wants to hear, right? So I hope you're feeling good wherever you are watching from. I am, uh, yeah, tired, just physically tired, uh, maybe a little emotionally tired right now. I think it's just, it was a long day, and um, I, I uh, yeah, I, I didn't sleep well last night. I tossed and turned, and as a result, it made today extra long. I did sneak a nap in at one point, but... Uh, I don't think it was restful because I woke up feeling groggy and tired and kind of empty, which is how I'm feeling at the moment. Now, I know this is only temporary. It will pass. I'll, uh, I'll get a good night's sleep tonight and feel great tomorrow. But when I am very tired like this, the exhaustion sets in. That's when the anxiety uh, takes over. And that's when, you know, the, the million thoughts you have, coulda, woulda, shoulda, all silliness, things that you cannot control and your mind wanders about it nonstop. I prefer to think about the things I can control, which is how I respond and react to crazy situations, things that are um, hmm, unknown, control. I, I'm a little... I'm a little bereft of um, thoughts this evening. I guess it's just because, like I said, I'm tired. And that happens. I did have, um, yesterday I had a terrible anxiety uh, attack. It came out of nowhere. We were just doing a couple of things and getting ready to head out. And I'm like, I just looked at Bridget and I'm like, yeah, I'm having a full-blown anxiety attack right now. She's like, 
Really? Oh yeah, I mask it very well because I've been used to hiding it my whole life, so you can't really tell unless it's really obvious, and I don't always make it obvious. I've I've learned to to uh, to pretend that pretend that everything is real when I'm panicking inside, and that that has to do with exhaustion as well. Even though you know I do take medication, it does wonderful things. Sometimes it uh, doesn't do everything. And there are times, like when I said, uh, you know, I'm very tired. When I get exhausted, it uh, it can certainly rear its ugly head. And yes, Jen, whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. Oh, you're welcome, Dan. I hope I can help out. <laughs> Those uh, to the friends and folks that are joining this evening. Hope I can help you in some small way. Help, help, help you to uh, come to grips with any mental health issues that you may have because I have them too, and how we can find a way to improve our lives and deal with the things that we have to deal with. You know, sometimes sometimes it can be difficult to just get out of bed. Well, I know I've had those days. I haven't had them recently. I'd say in the last four years I may have had one, possibly two days like that. And, you know, I'll have moments where the, the mental health issue rears its ugly head, but I, I don't have the feeling of complete exhaustion anymore that I used to get from the depression because it zaps all your strength and takes everything from you. Oh, you're welcome, Jim. That's my goal, is to make people feel less alone. One of the things that, um, you know, one of the ancillary benefits of depression is pure exhaustion. And then you can't sleep, even though you're so tired, you can't even spell your own name. And that's usually when the anxiety kicks in. And man, oh man, that's just a double-edged sword, isn't it? So, it really is important to get as much sleep as you need. And that's the key. You know what you need. I can't tell you. You'll have people say, you need eight hours. But I've spoken to sleep experts who say that's not true for everybody. Some people need eight. Some people need six. Some people need five. Some need 12. It varies from person to person. You can function on four, but you're not doing well. Less than four hours sleep in a night is really not good for mental and physical health. So do what you can to get your sleep. Even... And my doctor did tell me this. He says, even if it's a medically induced sleep, which they don't like to make a habit of, but there are times when you simply need to get some, pardon me, some sleep. And if you need to take it through uh, medication, so be it. Because if you don't get enough sleep, you will lose physical and mental control. And, yeah, it... uh, it's not a pretty picture. Not a pretty picture at all. So I spent some time playing with the lighting today, and I think uh, I think things look better now. You tell me. I um, did some adjustments. I was trying to do it during the show this morning, and was having a nightmarish problem trying to fix things. Of course, that gives me a little anxiety because I want to give you the best product I can best content I can. I want to produce something of quality for you that you can take to heart and enjoy and, and not look at and go, oh my God, that, uh, sure. still want it to be, you know, good for you to enjoy. Yeah, sleep is key. Uh, I lose my keys sometimes too, Jen. Yeah, I do have anxiety, depression, OCD, and ADHD. It's a lot of stuff, right? And I manage to cope. The ADHD is something I only discovered a few years ago. I I didn't know I had it. And I thought, no, that's just ridiculous. Then I found out I did. And knowing that you have an issue, a problem, um, a mental disorder, a mental disorder, knowing that you have it gives you the power to fix it as much as possible. 
medical intervention uh, may be necessary via medication. In my case, I've, I'm reluctant to start a round of medication because the Zoloft is working so well for my anxiety and depression that I, I would need to sit down and have a long discussion with my doctor to make sure that it wouldn't mess with that and, and set me off on a terrible course. Trying to explain to Bridget what ADHD is, and I get better, I think, every day. Oh my God, I have to dust in here. See, there's ADHD. I just see dust. I notice it right there in my console, and my mind immediately goes to, I need to get it right now. Of course, I'm not going to do that, but that's, uh, that's how it works. I was trying to explain to Bridget yesterday, or last night, that, um, or no, sorry, this morning. We were having coffee. I was explaining to her. She's like, so what, what is it like? I said, well, um, it gives you the ability to be hyper-focused on one thing and everything else falls away. But then all of a sudden, squirrel, and you're focused on that. So you might have nine half-done projects and one project that's completed and it looks amazing. And the other nine half-done is like, oh, well, let me go take care of that. And when you're taking care of that, you know, oh, I need this tool to fix that. So you go get that tool. And when you're getting that tool, you recognize that something over there needs to be fixed with the tool that you have in your hand. You'll do that. You'll fix that. You'll, And it's a cascading effect. Pretty crazy. I'll start to clean something and several hours will pass. And I've cleaned everything in the house and started to repaint. Now, I haven't done that in years, but that's certainly a sign. It's certainly one of those things. I can be laser focused on one thing for hours, but then the squirrels start running around. You can be talking to me and all of a sudden my mind just wanders off. It has nothing to do with you or what you're talking to me about. Believe me, if I could control how my brain responded, I would. Sometimes it just immediately needs to do something. It's uh, impulsive, and, and there are times when I, can, when I can control it, and there are times when I can't, especially when I'm tired. If I'm tired, yeah. I, I just, I can't, I can't focus on, I can focus on multiple things at the same time. So let me put it to you that way. So yeah, I can focus, I, I hear what you're saying, but I need to show you this thing right away. Because I have to do it. And if I don't do it, I'll forget to do it. And then I'll get frustrated later on when I realize that I haven't shown you this thing that I tried to show you. So yeah, ADHD is not fun. It really can be a kick in the arse. And I, uh, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. There are moments when it can be beneficial, like my OCD, because it makes me a perfectionist. The OCD makes me a perfectionist of what I'm doing, the tasks that I'm setting out to do. But everything else gets left behind, and the problem is that I won't eat. You know, I'll, I'll just work straight through. I've worked 12-hour shifts and not eaten, and then realize I'm really cranky because now I'm hungry, I'm hangry, and I'm tired, and I have no energy to continue doing what I was supposed to see. I'm trying to take a drink right now. This is an example. I was thirsty, I needed a drink, but here I am rambling on about how the, how the squirrels work on the, are the hamsters on the wheel? I don't know. Put in whatever description you think is necessary to describe what ADHD is like for you. For me, it can be, uh, it can be really problematic. Because I, I might look calm, cool, and collected, and passive, and chill. And for the most part, I don't really have a lot of stress in my life. But when the, uh, the brain is running at 100 miles an hour, and you're just like, I need to sleep right now. And it's not an anxiety issue. It's an ADHD issue. That's a whole different thing. With anxiety, or with, you know, I can... I can breathe through it to help calm myself. And that's what I did yesterday. It took a little while. It was a fairly heavy attack. Not the worst one I've had. My God, not even close. But it was th the worst I've had in a while. And it took a little while to get it settled. And then, of course, later on, I simply crashed. 
uh, went over to Bridget's for a bit, and we were there, and, and uh, she says, I have to go to the store. You want to come with me? I'm like, I can't leave the house right now. I need to, uh, I need to sit here on the couch. I don't, I don't have the energy to do that. I, I need to sit here on the couch. She's like, are you okay? I go, no, 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 I'm just, I'm crashing right now. So she went out to the store. I don't know how long she was gone for. I curled up on the couch under a blanket with some music going, and I passed out cold. When I got up, I felt better, much better. It was, uh, it was a strange afternoon, to say the least. It was, I mean, it was a good afternoon, but it was a strange afternoon. And, and to say that I was a little messed up would be an understatement. <laughs> I got through it, though. I always do. I mean, I I have to. You know, I don't see any other way. It's get through it, work through it, make it happen. What other choice do you have? Yeah, need is not weakness, Dan. You are correct. It is not. And having this um, disorder, that's the word I was looking for, having this disorder uh, it doesn't define me. It's certainly a part of who I am. It doesn't define me. And I try and do my best and to advocate for others where, where and when I can. That's why we're doing the mental health walk in June. We still have to get some more organizing done on that, perhaps tomorrow. I believe Mr. Beaver should be in town, so we'll, uh, we'll have a, a discussion about that see if we can uh, get things organized for the 15th of June to do the mental health walk through uh, the Centertown area of downtown Ottawa. We'll do a 5K loop and finish up at uh, the Lieutenant's Pump where we can do a pubcast. At least that's the plan for now. We'll see if that works out. But, you know, it's uh, we won't be able to um, create a charitable organization for this year. We'll, we'll get to work on it for next. But I think this could be a, a raise awareness thing. And we could, uh, you know, have people just donate to your favorite mental health charity in, in your local community because, after all, that's the idea behind it, is to help your local community. So, you know, I'll, I'll have some more, more um, info about that in the future. It's going to be done through a separate channel, but... Um, I'll be talking about it on this one as well because it's uh, it's important and it's the mental health walk is M E N capital M E N. I'll put it in the chat here for those of you can see it. There we go, mental health walk. And the reason we're doing it is the high percentage of men who. Um, unalive themselves, for want of another term, due to mental health issues, be it anxiety or depression, bipolar, whatever the case may be. It's a very high rate. It's because, as men, we usually don't feel like we can talk about these things. Now, I, of course, have changed my focus on that a number of years ago. I started to talk about my depression uh, openly, in a public forum the day I learned that um, Robin Williams died. And I, I think it was, that was kind of a, a light bulb moment for me, if you will, where, you know, here was this person who brought so much joy to so many people, but suffered immensely. And I thought, you know, if I don't talk about it, it might take me might take somebody else I love. So I opened up about it right then and there. It was another five years before I just started to discuss my anxiety because, well, anxiety is a fickle beast. It tells you all kinds of terrible things, none of which are true, by the way. It's always giving you the woulda, coulda, shoulda, what if, ifs and buts. Yeah. One of the things I constantly say is that I can only control what I can control, and what I can control is how I act and react to things. I cannot control how other people react or act or react to things, situations. I can control myself. And that's all I can do. But 
Sorry about that. Anxiety will tell you different things and make you worry about situations that haven't happened or may never happen. So I don't, I don't let it talk to me like that anymore. And I'm successful most of the time. Most of the time. There are times when I lose that battle, but not often. I tend to win it simply because of the fact that it's kind of like all the medication, the breathing exercises. And Kyle, you are so right, sir. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. That's exactly what it is, sir. That's exactly what it is. God, I wish I had your wisdom when I was your age. <laughs> I have it now, so I'm putting it to use now, but you're right. 10% what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. So you have to choose how you act and react to the things. And it's that simple, really. And anxiety will tell you, you should react this way because this could happen. Well, I don't deal with coulds or woulds or shoulds. I'm going to deal with facts. And, and how how things unfold. It's all I can do. I'll deal with facts and how things unfold. And if they unfold unfavorably, I'll deal with that too. But I refuse to let that fickle beast of anxiety take over and allow me to lose sleep over it. There are times, there are times when I will. I will have to surrender to that beast because I'm just too tired and too weak to fight. But, as bad as it gets when having an anxiety attack or an anxiety moment or an anxiety issue, I do take comfort in the fact that I know it is only temporary. It is hell while you're going through it, but it is only temporary. Then I do some breathing exercises and some slight meditation, not sitting in a lotus position with incense burning, chanting Om. That's not who I am, and you don't have to meditate that way if you don't want to. And that's the truth. You can choose to meditate by just sitting there and closing your eyes for 30 seconds and just concentrating on your breathing. 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, three minutes. One of the courses I took a few years ago taught us a three-minute meditation and how much and how effective it was at calming oneself in the midst of an anxiety attack. There are lots of tools. And the one particular one that I remember the most was it just discussed, you know, sit comfortable wherever you are, as comfortable as you can. And let's start to relax every muscle in your body. Start wherever you feel necessary. Maybe your shoulders. Feel your shoulders are tense. Try and let them go. Let your jaw relax. Your legs flexed? Don't do that. Are your shoulders tight? Is your back pressure bothering you? Are your uh, fists clenched? Is your jaw clenched? Slowly let go of all of those things. And then remember to take deep cleansing breaths. And it works. It works really well. And it's not mumbo-jumbo, it's actually science. Because you're releasing GABA into your brain. And I know I've discussed this many times before, but not everybody's aware of it. And there's usually different folks that come in to join and watch the show. But GABA is uh, a brain chemical, and when it releases, it helps to calm you and relax you and make you feel better. That's why oftentimes if you look at somebody who has just done something athletic because they've been doing, you know, breathing exercises per se, because that's what's happening. Well, exercise helps release endorphins. Now, mind you, when you're really anxious, the last thing you might be able to concentrate on doing is exercise, so a breathing exercise is good. We all manage it in the only way we know how, but if you have more tools in your toolbox, you can do a little better each and every time. You know what's funny, when I'm, earlier this evening I was lying on the couch watching hockey, 
and I was thinking to myself, I don't know if I can do some a show tonight. Honestly, I was like, I was just tired and feeling down and feeling um, empty. And my dog snuggled up against me, and I pet her for a few minutes. And I looked at the TV, and I thought, you know what? If I get up and do this, if I move around, if I get up in front of the camera and talk, I will feel better. And you know what? I do. Being here with you folks on a Monday evening at 9 p.m. is helpful to me. I hope I'm able to help you as well. So, I want to say thank you. Thank you for joining me this evening. Thank you for listening to me meander on about anxiety and depression and this charitable organization we're going to try and help found, fund for next year. And if I can help you in any way, I'm happy to do so. Remember to breathe deep, cleansing breaths. And for those of you who like the whisper content, I will put up some more later in the week so you can have some whispers to help you to relax. As I'm told, some people relax to the whispers. I don't tend to do the whisper content for very long because it's hard on my throat, but for those of you who like it, here it is, and you will be getting more soon, I promise, as I start to do more and more shorts when I can take time out of my day to do it. So thanks for coming by, folks. I appreciate each and every one of you. You have yourselves a wonderful evening, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Wish you 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 wish you